Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Crate, and today I'm here with a very special guest. Um, he may be new to you, but he is not new to Guitar Crate because he is the other half of Guitar Crate. So please welcome Peter. Hello. So um, Peter is joining us today for a couple reasons. One is he's really shy and I want to kind of get him out in front of you guys, um, but we've been doing uh, a little bit of talking and since I have a very bad influence on Peter. We are going to build Peter a custom guitar. And we thought this was worth doing a video on because uh, Peter's weird and he likes weird stuff. And I mean that in the best of ways, but this is actually going to be not just another like, oh, I want a strap, but put a humbucker in it. So, um, you know, to kind of get into that and really the mindset of where you're coming from, Peter, why don't you give us a, a just a quick background of more or less your influences and how they're influencing this guitar. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I play guitar, I've been playing guitar for about 10 years, and you know, that that's that's actually not where I started as a musician. So like, as a, as a younger person, as a kid in school, I played in band, played band instruments like clarinet and saxophone, and I really enjoyed it. You know, I was something that I that I wish I had kind of been able to stick with, but after a while you stop playing and mm -hmm. I didn't play anything for a long time. Um, later in life I started playing guitar and and that's what's been my my love for since then. But as TJ mentioned, my interests don't necessarily line up with like rock and roll or or whatever. Like I've always listened to electronic music. Um, if you guys ever heard of Square Pusher or Amon Tobin. Um, they put out some really cool music that you might, you might listen to, like, in a, you might hear a video game with Amon Tobin music in it. It's, it's just interesting stuff that I've always enjoyed. Like, I'm not, I'm not going home and listening to the radio. Like, this is the stuff that I'm enjoying, like I listen yep. to. And to that end, that's where I've tried to sort of do my own thing in terms of branching out into what we're doing mm -hmm. today. And that's why we thought it'd be kind of a cool video because we know it's not something you see every day. But yeah, and that's one of the things I really like about, um, you know, where you're coming from is, is you're coming from more of a strict, mu like strictly just a musician. You, you know, you know how to read notes, you see, you know, different, different instruments. Um, you know, so it's not just straight rock and roll. And so that for, for me, like I, I grew up playing guitar as like rock and roll guitar. I grew up with Zeppelin and Hendrix and um, as I started working in different shops and, and working in the industry, you know, you get the elitist, you get the bubble that you have to be in to be a good guitar player. Like if you can't play these songs that, you know, are the top hits by these bands and you don't have this kind of a guitar, then you know you don't really have a good guitar. So, so you know through a lot of this, I was like, why would you do that? That's not with it. That's not a guitar thing. But you know, I've you know it's really helping even me branch out with my thoughts because you are unencumbered by the the stereotype of what you know what you should have to sit at the cool kids table, and you know. It's a nice way to put it. Un <laughs> unencumbered by knowledge of the yeah. rock and roll industry, which is really true. I mean, I yeah. my background is in like playing Rocksmith the video game. Like yeah. that's yeah. that's my idea of playing the instrument for a good time. It's a pastime. Like I enjoy it. It's a hobby. It's a way to stay interested to kind of continue to to create music. Um, but that's where I want to sort of build off of it and maybe yeah. you know kind of bridge the gap between the the whole playing music and rock and roll and feeling it in terms of you yep. creating something as opposed to reading tablature or reading notes and playing what that note is you know yes uh, and so this dream guitar we spent the last month really honing it in and because and, there are a couple things where I was like are you sure you want to do that uh, and it wasn't even always because it was a bad idea it was like also a lot of work and I was like I don't I don't want to do that, um, but to to not be lazy and to help push me into doing something that's you know not just a cookie cutter one two. Um, it's gonna sound a little stereotypical to start, but we're gonna start with an all parts strap body. Um, it's been stained blue. It will be blue, but it's just stained blue. There's no particular reason for it yet. Um, 
But we're going to start with a regular strap body. But we are going to put uh, a humbucker and a P90 in, in here as a standard guitar. But then we are going to use the router as well for what kind of a bridge, Peter? We're doing a Floyd Rose from yes. Graph Tech. Yes, and that's going to dig into a couple other things as well, but we are going to branch into the Floyd Rose and we're going to recess it right into the body so it's not going to sit up on it. It's actually going to sink down so the angle stays straight. Um, kind of like, because I have one here, just like this Charvel. So the only stock Floyd Rose that I have, but there you go. Uh, well, stock recessed Floyd Rose. So this is actually something that I tend to do often, um, but after we do this, there's a little more to it, and this is where it gets cool. So Peter, tell me a little bit more about this Graph Tech and what it is that's so special and why these little cables are hanging out. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting, um, and it's something that Graph Tech makes that's designed to turn your guitar into a MIDI instrument. So you can plug a 13 cable. 13 pin cable into the guitar and plug it into like a synth or a DAW um, yes. to make different kinds of music. Now, the reason I went with the, the Graph Tech was because it's recessed into the instrument, it's built into it, it's not bolt on like some of the other models. But what it does is it basically takes each string individually, they each have their own, their own pickup, its own piezo uh, pickup on each string. So you can basically take each string and have it do its own thing. Have it, you know, change tunings or change sounds or or whatever you want to do, which I think is really cool. Yes. The Floyd Rose aspect of it is totally off the wall in terms of adding more complexity to it. Um, but I think that it's worth it because, again, if you're going to do it, you know, do what you want. Do what you think is cool. Um, it might not make any difference in terms of how, it, how a MIDI interprets the sound, but it is still going to be a, a regular guitar too, right? Mm -hmm. So you can still do some of the things that you would do with a Floyd Rose, like bending. Yeah. The magic of a Floyd Rose is, is it does turn a lot of people off because of the learning curve. Once you get through the learning curve of a Floyd Rose, there really is, is not another bridge like it. Uh, and that can be for better or for worse. Like if you're trying to sound like a vintage guitar, then a Floyd Rose is obviously going to change the tone of the guitar to, to not sound vintage. But as far as efficiency and accuracy of tuning, once it's dialed in and once you get past that learning curve, uh, it is an exceptional bridge and will bring the most versatility to the guitar. So having that with the ghost system built into it is, is pretty awesome. And then this, this guitar, because we're starting from scratch, um, will have the functionality of a normal guitar with a normal jack but then we're going to actually put in with all those electronics and this is the part this is the part that makes me cry a little bit because um soldering you know soldering's easy and regular stuff um but once you get into having boards and chips and everything like that yeah. and all these wires that you have to clip together um, i'm sure be. This is going to be a little bit of a bear of a project, yeah. which I didn't know necessarily when we first started talking about it, but it didn't turn me off because however long it takes TJ to figure this out, uh, it's still going to be worth it. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's something I, I have the confidence in, but it's it's out of the normal wheelhouse. You know, I've done I, I, I don't, I've done like two of these before, and this is this is actually it's cool because it's it's the the piezo with the MIDI, but it's also got the acoustic so. It's MIDI controller and turns your guitar into a complete MIDI controller, and it kind of gives it like the acoustic simulation sound. Um, there's a couple of ESPs and other guitars that are doing that as well now that you can do factory, but for you know well over a thousand dollars. And then um, this will still function as a normal rock and roll guitar. So this um, this is going to be the base, but this is where it's going to go. You know to another level of being able to make and just plug this directly into a DAW to plug this into a, an actual synth pedal like an SY1000 um, or just you know plug into a Marshall and go. So you really have the full flexibility in this. So, um, so the body's covered and all that kind of cool stuff but of course that wasn't enough for Peter. 
And, um, you know, Peter, to give, to be fair, Peter really is an engineer mind. That's why, that's why you see me on video and he's the one that's actually making everything work. Um, but, uh, I made the mistake of really, I don't know, I wasn't teasing you, but I was, I was making a joke about the, well, about how guitars are not really like intonations, never perfect, and guitars are really imperfect instruments. And so from there, I um, I told Peter because I was trying to give him an education um, about how guitars really weren't perfect. But then I told him there's a company called True Temperament that makes some really interesting necks. Yeah. It was kind of like a way to put your foot in your mouth kind of thing. <laughs> but we talked about it and we talked yeah. about like what it's about. And I watched some YouTube videos and other people kind of giving their own interpretations of it. Most of them were good. Some people were like, that's not what a guitar is about. It's not supposed to sound, you know, perfectly intonated mm -hmm. all the time. It's supposed to have that, that sort of uh, distortion, you know, and yeah. different balance. To, to give you a good example, because, you know, yes, you intonate your guitar at the saddles. Um, and you have like the buzz fight in who will try and give you some intonation up here but to give you an idea of how the ratios work and how far the off they are I mean your your third fret there it's I don't know, it's like two frets off like that's that's a, literally how m much of a shift there is and so the true temperament system really is going to give you it, it's really going to give you accurate ratios versus the accurate notes. And that's really where um, you, know, you get into the, you know, more of the tinfoil hat stuff. You've got the guys out there that talk about four, 432 hertz and how that's really what we're supposed to be on. And, you know, you get people get into semitones and how there's more than 12 notes and legitimately they're right. Um, but our American system of the 12 note scale is is very it's just it's 12 in like perfectly separated notes and music doesn't exactly operate like that it operates in ratios harmonies and true harmonies operate in ratios and that's what this is fixing um or attempting to fix in the guitar so you know it's it's definitely going to be unique it's going to be cool um the one thing i would like to point out is we did not do this incense to make the MIDI track better. Um, the MIDI track's just fine on a regular guitar. The Ghost system has a has a good reputation behind it. Um, but this but is this is going to have is... a digital and an analog signal. So the analog signal that, that goes out mm -hmm. will will be more influenced by the True Temperament neck than the MIDI system. Yes. Um, and. And the one thing that I am actually very excited about, and this is for anybody out there who's who's a hobbyist in, in this kind of thing, um, you know, the the neck is going to be an experiment. You know, if you're going to go if you're going to go build your custom guitar, go big, do something crazy. But the one thing Peter did listen to me about is a bolt-on neck. So if we put this together and three months into it, he's like, you know what, I'm not feeling it. We can put a new one on and take this one off, no biggie. So. Um, but yeah, so this is the crazy guitar that we are going to put together, um, uh, is going to be a recessed Floyd Rose Strat with, uh, humbucker MP90, it is going to have a ghost system in it with all the bells and whistles that come along with the ghost system and a true temperament neck. So, you know, this is, this is the video where we're kind of explaining it out and, you know, why it's different. And then what we're going to do is put up a next couple of videos I'm putting this together and then showing you what it's like at the end to build something that's you know not just going to conform to the normal you know relic 72 looking strap. One of the things that has been for me very encouraging is is part of Guitar Crate and the purpose of doing this is to think outside the box is to say you know, no, I don't have to sit at the cool kids' table to have good tone or have, you know, the right rig. Um, you know, some people create great sounds off of, you know, a Marshall half stack and, you know, these crazy, you know, 32 pedal boards with, you know, all these different control switching. And some people plug into a, 
you know, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe with three boss pedals and they make great sound. Um, you know, a, a new thing that we're getting into now that people probably aren't as aware of is guitar players like making and recording their own music and they don't always know piano or other instruments to really get involved. So having MIDI control in your guitar and having you know, a guitar that does what you want it to do versus, oh, it sounds like the ultimate guitar sound that is expected of me. Um, you know, we at Guitar Crate really want you to branch out and be creative and not just have the same five pedals on your pedal board. We yeah. want you to look at your guitar as an instrument and look at you as a musician, not a rock and roll or a blues or a jazz guy. Yeah, I think that's that's a great way a great way to put it. It's about, you know, expanding your horizons as a musician, keeping, you know, having a reason to keep coming back to playing your guitar, maintaining your, your guitar, exploring it, understanding more about yourself as you continue to, to play and express yourself. So, cool. All right. So we will be back shortly with, um, with video number two with, the you know, you know, they'll probably be segmented and a little bit shorter as we just show the different steps going into it. Um, but we'll see you back here soon. And uh, until then, don't be shy. Step over at the website. Um, get a better look at Guitar Crate and everything that we have to offer. Um, and uh, until next time, be inspired and uh, subscribe to Greatness.